Hey guys, it's Shawnee and I'm back with another book review video and this video, so I know in the previous video I said I was going to review The Good Nurse and I'm, I'm working on that book. <laughs> but um, I've been reading the book Layla, which I mentioned briefly um, in the last video that I did of a book review and it took me a while to read it just because one, it's an ebook. Sometimes I can read ebooks really fast, other times not so much. And Layla kind of frustrated me. So let's jump into this video. I'm not going to promise I won't deliver or give out any um, spoilers because I want to talk about it. Like I want to talk about this book and not in detail. I'm not going to hold you. I actually, um, so I have a planner of, I guess you can call it a Franken planner, which I haven't really used too much since I've gotten into digital planning. But um, when I started out reading uh, Layla, I decided to write down when I was stuck, you know, like as far as like, oh my God, this book is like, what's the, why is she locked, like why is she tied up, why, why? So you go to Goodreads, there's a synopsis of the book. Um, okay, I'm just going to read it very quickly, um, just give you a quick rundown of what this book is about, what the story is about. It says, from number one New York Times bestselling author Colleen Hoover comes a novel that explores life after tragedy and the enduring spirit of love. Aww. Um, when Leeds meet Layla, he's convinced he'll spend the rest of his life with her until an unexpected, an unexpected attack leaves Layla fighting for her life. After weeks in the hospital, Layla recovers physically, but the emotional and mental scarring has altered the woman Leeds fell in love with. In order to put their relationship back on track, Leeds whisks Layla away to the bed and breakfast where they first met. Once they arrive, Layla's behavior takes a bizarre turn, and that's just one of many inexplicable occurrences. Feeling distant from Layla, Leeds soon finds Solace and Willow, another guest of the B&B with whom he forms a connection through their shared concerns. Mm -hmm. His decision to help her find answers put him in direct conflict with Layla's well-being. Leeds soon realizes he has to make a choice because he can't help both of them. But if he makes the wrong choice, it can be detrimental for all of them. Dum -dum -dum. So you're like, okay, what? what? what is this about? This is... Um, that's what it's about. It kind of intrigues you a little bit. It's got a little paranormal, supernatural, you know, kind of makes you scared. Don't read it at night if you're a scaredy cat. Um, which, I ain't gonna lie, I, I did finish this book pretty much this morning. I started late last night and then I finished it this morning and today is Thursday. So, um, okay. So, at first, I'm gonna read what I wrote down in my book journal real quick. All right, I said, uh, this book brings you into lead being interviewed. See, I didn't even understand what was going on. I thought it was like a cop or whatever. He was actually, um, I guess he was being interviewed in a way, but there's this guy coming asking questions about Willow, this this woman. Um, and Layla, uh, his girlfriend, is tied up and captive in a room. And Lead regrets tying her up, but he makes it out like it's a necessity. And during the interview, he gives his backstory how he met Layla. Occasionally, he stops telling the story to attend to Layla. And I put, I'm in chapter four and I'm slightly annoyed. <laughs> Why is it taking so long to get to the reason why Layla is tied up? I was so frustrated that I literally wrote that down. Um, just tell us already. I feel like I'm being set up to be disappointed. <laughs> if I only knew. So I didn't read yesterday, but it's annoying to have it still unread and on my to be read list. I was so annoyed. And that's probably why I took a big break from this book. Because I was just like, <sighs> like, why? Why do we have to wait so long? And... But now that I've read the book, I get why we had to wait so long. So it's kind of annoying because it's so slow. It's a build up. Like she, like, first of all, Colleen Hoover is like a freaking genius because she will have you um, thinking everything. So oh, I just lost all of my light. What happened? Okay. So she will have you thinking like, everything is like one way and then by the end of the story she didn't flip it and now you question everything you read in the book and you're like what the freak like I was mad I was mad at the beginning because I was mad because I wanted to know why this guy's there why is he being interviewed why is Layla tied up like why are we taking so long to get to this story and at the time like you know she takes you all the way back to when they met and all that stuff which is important but then um 
and you know then he has to stop and keep going back and forth and she's like pleading with him to let her go so you're like okay he's trying to kidnap her but then enters willow so willow came in the picture before she got tied up so Leeds is a guy who has had a music career kind of like a b-rated music career i guess you would say and but anyway before he met layla he had a girlfriend named sable and sable was like obsessed with him okay and so when he started dating layla um layla posted a picture or they posted a picture up on instagram sable found out she got mad she was like your crazy ex-girlfriend and so long story short she comes to the house like hold up before i go any further let me tell you this is a spoiler alert. I just want to talk about the book. Like, if you watched it for a review, it's, you're going to get it. But I'm going to tell you what the story is, too. Because this is good. So, so Sable, um, so Sable, like, um, comes to the house. She shoots at um, Layla. And, um, what's his name? Leeds shoots Sable. Okay, so Sable dies, right? And so that's Layla. Layla flatlines. But Layla's brought back, okay? And so she gets taken to the hospital. She goes through this whole recovery. Um, it's like six months. And during these six months, um, she's changed. You know, there's different... He notices things about her that isn't like her old self. So that's why he goes to the bed and breakfast. So I won't get into all the nitty gritty details, but that's the gist of that. So, and these changes are so like profound that he is even questioning if he wants to pretty much be with her because he got thrown into this caretaker role and he's not sure that um you know he wants to be there in that caretaker role for the rest of her life he cares about Layla he loves Layla but she's just not who he remembers her to be and she doesn't remember a lot of things that were important you know in their relationships so um, so yes, so they go to the bed and breakfast and that's when he starts noticing like almost immediately paranormal, paranormal activity. So, um, like for instance, like, you know, dishes being bothered. Um, I think the lights, was it the lights going on and off? Little stuff, little stuff. And he was just kind of like, what? So he ended up putting like a security cam footage in there. Um, he typed to the ghost, um, and she typed back. It was just crazy. Like she knew she was current. The ghost does not know like how she got there, why she's there, if she ever existed, if she had a life before. Like she is literally floating in nothingness. Oh, I'm about to go to my notes I wrote while I was reading last night. Um, so yeah, so she's literally, you know, in nothingness, feels empty. So she does take possession of Layla's body. And that's where things kind of get kind of crazy because um, Lee's at this point isn't really feeling Layla at, you know, at, I mean, he's kind of on the verge of like, eh, I don't know if I want to be with her. Hopefully this works. If it doesn't, I don't know if I'm going to continue this relationship. But then he meets this ghost who he, who takes um, possession of Layla's body. Like she doesn't stay there, but she come, you know, she's around. She sees everything. She hears everything. Um, they end up forming a you know a little relationship not like it doesn't start out intimate it's very innocent at first because they don't really know who like she knows she's familiar with leads and he makes her feel comfortable but he does and they have this like you know connection that they can't explain um so they ended up spending a lot of time together but um she comes in and out of Layla's body you know at night and so it gets to the point where Leeds is like literally waiting for nightfall for Layla to fall asleep so that way this ghost can take possession of her body and so like you know he's like annoyed by Layla he does he starts to realize like he prefers you know the ghost company and the ghost does have a name and if you read the story, you know her name. But if you haven't, you got to read to find out who she is and why and what. So, um, so anyway, she gets very, he, um, so he's always looking forward to this moment. And then throughout the story, he kind of realizes like, you know, it's not fair to Layla that this ghost, I allow this ghost to use her body to basically communicate with me. But he justifies it because he wants to help the ghost like 
find out who she is, why she's there, if she ever was alive, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to read an excerpt and I'm going to read you what I wrote. <laughs> um, it says, that's not Layla's fault. There's nothing Layla has done wrong. She's a victim in all of this. She was a victim six months ago. She's a victim now. And even though she's unaware of it, the only thing Layla did wrong is fall in love with me. Um, and then I wrote, um, Liz has fallen in care slash love with, I'm going to say the ghost, um, to the point he prefers her company. It's like watching a slow breakup and the other person doesn't know. Like in the highlighted section, he says, Layla is the victim. It's not her fault. It's his. He has fallen for her too quickly. Talking about the ghost. Um, he literally counts the hours down till Layla has to sleep. That's jacked up. And, and what I mean by it's like watching a breakup or um in slow motions because he you see him falling out of love with Layla and preferring this ghost and then he's like oh well Layla's always tired she always sleeps in well yeah because her body's being in use you know at night and they're not doing anything intimate or anything they're just up talking watching movies eating like you know just enjoying each other's company but then another passage um he was like she was concerned about why she was so tired all the time the ghost was using her body at night, so she wasn't getting as much sleep as she thought she was getting. She'd wake up confused as to why she slept in so late and when she was going to when she was going to bed so early. She started thinking it was related to her head injury. And the person that was interviewing him says, and you didn't tell her otherwise. And then it says, I inhale and then slowly exhale before answering that question. No, I went along with it. Made her an appointment to see the neurologist. What did the neurologist tell her? The appointment isn't until next week. And then he's like, are you going to take her? And he's like, no. So basically he made her think she was crazy and that it was a part of her brain injury. But really it's just because this ghost is taking, is using her body to, you know, hang out with her boyfriend. And yeah, she's not really crazy. And the reason why you know, that she she's trying to rationalize why she's so tired, but then also when the ghost is startled, she leaves her body and that happened like twice in the story and um she freaks out like majorly. And so then my commentary, I'm like at this point, I'm like, that's just wrong. You chose a ghost over your girlfriend. Like if that I would be so pissed. Um so you know he goes there's another passage where he was like, you know, he was, he wanted to help Willow. He didn't want her to stop possessing Layla, but he felt bad. There's like a, a conflict, in, internal conflict for Leeds because, you know, he does care about Layla. He does love her as a person. I think at this point he's falling out of love with her. Um, but at the same time, and like he wants to do what's in the best interest, but this overwhelming desire to help um, the ghost is like greater. Um... So, and then the interviewer picks up on it. And he was like, is it fair to assume this continued because you started to develop feelings for the ghost? And he says, I can't even say it out loud. Instead, I just, I guess I didn't have like more. But, and then I wrote, and there it is, folks. And there it is. And there it is. <laughs> and then the ghost en ends up admitting that it is hard for her too to leave the her Layla's body and go back to nothingness because she doesn't feel anything. She doesn't have memories and all that jazz. Like she's just literally just in existence and not even she's like in the caught in between the worlds or whatever. I wrote um, the the tired version of Layla is unattractive to Leeds, but yet he still allows Willow to use her body, thus giving you the version of Layla you don't prefer. As he's moved on to the ghost, and it's the ghost that he wants to talk to, he realizes he's falling for the ghost. And then he also realizes that um, the ghost taking over Layla's um, body is causing Layla to stress and, and causing her to be tired. And then he feels like he's turning into a liar. So it's kind of like he's being selfish in a sense. Like, he wants what he wants, he doesn't really, he cares, but he doesn't care how it affects her. Um, it also affects him, but he's just kind of selfish in this sense. There's a conflict between him and the ghost, and then he does tell her to to leave Layla's body. And, um, as they get into it, um, I forget what it's about. But yeah, so they get into an argument, and he tells her to leave, He and it's almost as if they like break up or whatever. But also, him and Layla get into an argument, 
um, to where she kind of discovers, you know, a surprise or she discovers he wants, he wanted to propose to her. She discovers, she finds that out. Like she discovers that and, um, all he's, but she gets mad at him because she feels like he's been questioning their relationship for the last six months. And then she wants to leave. But his only concern is I can't let Layla leave because if she leaves, I won't see Willow again. And so then they're like, you know, he tries to stop her and then he ends up proposing to her. There was one point in the story where I was just like, you know what? I don't even feel bad for leads. Like I felt like it was karma at a certain point, you know? Um, but Colleen, like I said, Colleen Hoover does that. In her, if, if you read Verity, like she has you thinking like you, you get so mad in the beginning. Like you're mad at Leeds for allowing this ghost to use Layla. Then you're mad at him for tying Layla up without getting hurrying up and getting to the point of why. And then once you see the story unfold, you're like, how can he, you know, try to live this double life and then when you find out after it's dragged on for almost 293 pages that you know it's actually a love story <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of interesting then you you're like conflicted yourself like no I want to be mad I want to hate this leads character but but then it, you know almost a quarter of the three quarters of the way through the book you're just like rooting for them to to work you know him and the and the ghost she gets you mad at the ghost and and leads and then um and then at the end you're rooting for them so it was just like one of those like it Layla is one of those stories that you have to be patient and to get through all of the you know I'm not gonna say mundane, but you gotta get through all the boring stuff, the plot building stuff, before you even get to the real meat to where you're actually page turning. But then once you get to that page turning part, like it's interesting, you're intrigued, your emotions are all caught up in it. Um, I do think the part with the interviewer, like I feel like, you know, that was kind of dragged on. If it was, I feel like Layla like it's not the same but it reminds you if you ever watch soap operas in like the early 2000s or whatever of um passions and how like um Louise and Sheridan and uh I forget her name I can see her face Beth they were all like in this like web and you know Sheridan was locked in the basement and they would you know um Beth and her mother was keeping her locked up and um, Luis will get so close and then they would just like yank him back and, you know, it'll be like two seconds for him opening the door. And then, um, uh, and then like, I don't know, Beth will come out of nowhere or her mother will come out of nowhere and be like, oh, Luis, da -da 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 -da. and then Sherrod is like, no, Luis. And it's like, oh my God. And then the next episode, he gets a little bit closer. And then he gets to start all over again. And he's like, Sheridan. Oh, my God. Anyways, that's why I felt <laughs> with um, Layla. It was just like, get to the point of why Layla was freaking tied up. Like, get to the point. Get to the meat. But I will say, if you can stick it out and read all of the stuff that kind of makes you want to be like, Bruh! you know, if you get through that point, you get to the point of the page turning, which is about the middle of the book, just about. It's a good book. It's a good read. I did give it five out of five stars. I did read on Goodreads. Some people were like, they didn't really care for the whole like, you know, emotional abuse and, you know, kidnapping and, you know, with him, not or holding somebody against their will, like tying her up and all that stuff. So a lot of people weren't a fan of that. But I just think that was just the element of the story. Like, um, I could be triggering for some people, so I get that. But um, I don't really, I'm not, I mean, it wasn't my favorite part. I hated the fact that she was tied up. But I, for the con, for the, the plot, I understood. Once you get to the end, you understand why she's tied up. Um, which really, she's not even, once you make it through the end, you realize she's not even tied up as much as, and they make it sound because the ghost is entering her body when she falls asleep. So anyways, so yes, yeah, so I hope that you've read this book. I hope that um, this book review was a little bit less structured than my book review on um, 
on uh, Kindred, but that's because I literally just read it. This I finished the book this morning, and it was just like, I, and I was going to record this tomorrow, Friday, on set six, seven one, but um, I was just I'm still fired up, so fired up about it, <laughs> and I need to move on. I need to like decompress, get it all out, so I can start my next book, which I haven't decided if I'm going to finish The Good Nurse. Which I probably will eventually, but um, I probably will choose another book. I'm actually, I just downloaded Atomic um, Atomic Habits. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to review that one right away, but yeah, that was a good one. I know I promised one on The Yellow Wife. I think I promised one on Verity. It's been a while since I've read those books. Like literally a couple months, my memory's shot, but I'm going to still do those. Um, but I wanted to do this one about Layla because I just finished it. And this is raw, unfiltered emotions. I'm like, my mind is blown. So hopefully I can go to sleep tonight. <laughs> Happy editing, Sean. Um, and also, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content or if you like my videos on my channel, uh, please hit that subscribe button. And I will talk to you guys later.